Good afternoon, everybody. It's a bit later in the day that I'm doing this. Things got sidetracked today. Um, but as we wait to hear something from the Premier and hear from the Bishop what's going to happen next in the diocese, I thought I would like to share with you some words from um, the preface to the Vintage Spiritual Classics edition of The Rule of St. Benedict. And this preface is written by Thomas More. He says, part one of the monk's fantasy is the decision not to live as everyone else does. The man or woman looks around and sees a way of life that is chaotic, irreverent, or unethical, and decides to design a life according to different standards. Part two is sketching out the new way in a rule. Most, of course, do not go so far as to make a literal rule, or even to choose one, but subtly and originally they might think up ways of doing things that will be unique and full of value. Every thoughtful person, no matter what his or her lifestyle may be, has a rule. In our day of existential self-discovery, individualism, and the literalization of freedom, it may seem odd to reflect on one's culture, decide to live an examined and thoughtful life, and then choose a strict rule of conduct and attitude. The very word rule is connected to many terms that appear contrary to freedom. Regulation, ruler, both leader and straight edge, king, rex, correct, rectangle, rectitude. At first glance, following a rule doesn't appear to be a desirable alternative to a materialistic world. But regula, Latin for rule, even in the time of the ancient Romans, also referred to a pattern or a model. The very straight-edged rule that keeps things in line can also to help to design a house. It's a tough life in certain ways. The rule can be harsh, but it is also in its own way liberating. It frees a person from, from the unspoken rules of the society at large and offers an alternative. I think those words really spoke to me as I read them this, early this afternoon because it seems to me that we need a rule right now. We need someone to st stand up and say, you know what, asking about wearing masks and not gathering in big groups and, and not going out for coffee with, with people who aren't in your bubble, it's not working. And I'm as big a culprit as everyone else. I'll go out for coffee with Rob and talk to other people. I run into the store and if they don't have the must wear a mask sign on the door, sometimes I forget to put one on. But you know what? When I walk up to the door and it says a mask is required, I can go back to my car and get it. I can remember to put one on. Putting on a mask doesn't hurt anybody, but it might help. Even if we're not sure if they help, we are sure that they don't hurt. We need, at this time, as Christians, to think about a new rule. We need to think about ways that we can think about one another. What can we do in our own lives that brings health and hope and joy and the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, to other people? And one of the simple ways we can do that is indeed to hunker down. I know it's not ideal that we're not worshipping in church yet, and I don't know yet what will happen this coming Sunday. As soon as I do, I'll let you know. But right now... Let's work on the assumption that we're not. Let's work on the assumption that we have to find ways to share the good news with other people. And sometimes the best thing to do is to stay put. Right now, something that you can do is to pray. Think about the person who sits in the pew next to you, or used to sit beside you in your pew before we had social distancing. Think about that person that you used to go for breakfast with after church. Pray for them. Give them a call on the phone, fire off an email, open up a FaceTime or a Zoom chat, check out how they're doing, make sure they're okay. But for heaven's sake, for their sake, let's slow these things down. I know that in Wainwright and Edgerton, it, the pressure doesn't feel on. We don't have very many cases, but it doesn't take much for one case that comes in from a friend or a relative or a hockey team or somebody just getting gas on, on their way through. It doesn't take much for that to turn into 2 and 4 and 8 and 16 and 32 and 64, and you get my idea. Please consider establishing a rule for COVID for your own life. Take care of yourself, but in so doing, take care of other people. And remember that wherever we are, Jesus is with us. We are never alone. So let's be alone together, okay? Be together alone. Let's take care of one another. Wear your mask if you have to go out. And for heaven's sakes, please stay home. And if you're lonely, pick up your phone. 
pick up your phone and, and call or FaceTime, reach out to someone in a different way. Because we care for each other, this is what we have to do. Have a great day and God bless you.